everybody. I just realized that it's going to be a bit difficult to do this presentation with the thought of that paneer in my mind still, but, but I'm going to give it a try. So I have some good news, and then I have some not so good news, or maybe you can call it bad news. The good news is, is that when it comes to everything to do with creating purposeful brands, there's a hell of a lot of material available. You just have to Google. You just have to go online. There are lots of people who will give you expert advice, talk to you about how to build purposeful brands. So there's a hell of a lot of material available. The bad news is, is that it's very hard to craft and build purposeful brands, and you only learn it truly when you do it. Uh, there's a lot of mistakes you make along the way, and that's why my presentation for today as a keynote is creating purposeful brands, a practitioner's guide. I've had the opportunity to work on some of uh, Unilever's biggest, most purposeful brands over my time uh, in the company. And I can tell you it's not easy. It requires a lot of perseverance. Uh, I've made a lot of mistakes along the way, and I thought that in the next 20, 25 minutes or through my sharing, I can pass on some of the learnings and lessons that I've had. And if each one of you can leave from here with at least one message or one tip that you can take back into your own brands, I think I would have spent uh, these 20, 25 minutes would have been well spent for me. Uh, so let's get on with it. A couple of uh, videos and some examples to share as always. And I'm going to try to keep some time at the end uh, to make it two-way. So hopefully we have some Q&A uh, at the end. So please do feel free to uh, ask me questions uh, at the end, OK? So let's start then with, as always, the what. And what is brand purpose? You know, there's a lot of definitions. There's a lot of people who can speak for hours about this. I guess the simplest and uh, most intuitive definition that works for me, and that's what I put down here, and each word here is specifically crafted, has a specific meaning, which I will share with in a minute. I call it, you know, a single-minded and enduring expression of how the brand help, helps to make the world a better place. And I'm going to call out three things here, single-minded, enduring expression, and a better place, and maybe just go a little bit deeper saying, what does it mean uh, wearing you know, very, very practical uh, uh, operational an operator's hat? So single-minded simply means one single enduring thought, consistent over time, and across touch points. Sounds easy, very, very hard to do, because there are always so many competing messages. Best example I can think of is this beautiful brand, which I have the honor of leading and, and building in my portfolio, Surf Excel. Uh, 2004 was when Daag Achehe was born. We are now in 2024, and it's the same thought that goes on. And many of you have seen, grown up, enjoyed uh, 20 years of consistent advertising. It's the same thought. We just keep it contemporary and keep it running. But this brand, which uh, some of you would have seen has become a billion dollar brand, uh, HUL's first billion dollar brand, is not a simple brand. There are many, many formats, there are many, many geographies, and building consistency becomes harder because you know, there's a piece of bar advertising, there's powder advertising, there's liquids advertising, there's capsules advertising. How do you start to make it all do the relevant job that has to be done for that format and yet be true to what the brand stands for? Not easy, but I think the first part of of what is brand purpose is that you've got to be single-minded. And uh, uh, th this is really the way in which uh, Surf Excel has been built. And just to get us into the mood, I'm going to share with you the first Daag Ache ad, which was created 2004-2005. Uh, and I'm going to share with you then straight after that a piece of our latest advertising, which has just gone on air yesterday. And I leave you to decide how enduring the thought is. So there we go. Number one is very big. Number two is big. दाग लगने से अगर कुछ अच्छा होता है, तो दाग अच्छे हैं ना? Surf Excel, दाग अच्छे हैं। वापस नहीं करना। Yeah, so all of you remember that, and that was 2004-2005, and for the India of 2030s, and for us to reinvent Surf Excel as we look forward to the next decade, 
talking about some of the values and some of the themes that are relevant for parents and children today, let me share with you a piece of communication that has gone on live yesterday. Hey, Dad. Good job, Kiri. Any doubt? No doubt. इन सूखे दागों के लिए है नया सर्फ एक्सेल मैट्रिक एस पी पी टेक्नोलॉजी के साथ ये जिद्दी सूखे दाग निकाले पहली बार मशीन में ही हो गया। Any doubt? नया सर्फ एक्सेल मैट्रिक सो अगल माइंडेड इंड्योरिंग थॉट दैट गोज ओवर टाइम इज द फर्स्ट मैसेज द सेकेंड वन इज an enduring expression and in the company we have this thought of a brand say and a brand do a brand with which has an inspiring enduring purpose should be able to activate its thought and if you can't do that that's a simple uh, practical thought that means your purpose is not probably sharp enough and i think a great example of this is lifeboy lifeboy's purpose is to save lives by providing superior hygiene solutions i mean what a great purpose to have and you know uh, i'm sure many of us would love to work on a brand that says i save lives and uh this was a brand that all of us who have grown up with and maybe most of you are not my age right now but when i was growing up uh, it was all about tandurusti ki raksha karta hai life boy again early in the decade of the 2005 2010 ep uh, period we said listen we need to make this brand now a little bit more future fit and we went on to the journey of uh, focusing it on hygiene germ protection and i think there have been some fantastic examples of how this brand has been unlocked uh and and uh with some great communication i think the ones that really stand out for me are a few that i'm going to share during the difficult times of covid this was a brand that actually put out did a lot of great service not just in india globally on mobilizing hand sanitizers mobilizing hand washing solutions and really did save lives and i really like this thought this public service message from lifeboy i don't know how many of you remember this but this was uh advertising sponsored by the brand but said in encouraging people to sanitize hand wash during the covid months and they said really if you read it here uh, they would tell you that doesn't matter which hand wash uh, or sanitizer you use and it was really about uh, driving the awareness with the people we do a lot of work on ad, uh, taking this we took uh, we did this also on air with our advertising let me share that with you har indian se ek vinti hai corona virus ab tak gaya nahi par achhi aadatein chali gayi उन आदतों को वापस लाए मास्क पहनिए नाक पर भी वैक्सीन लीजिए दो गज की दूरी रखिए और लाइफ बॉय या किसी भी साबुन से हाथ धोएं या अल्कोहल बेस्ड हैंड सैनिटाइजर का इस्तेमाल करें कोरोना वायरस से इंडिया की सुरक्षा अब आपके हाथ में है सो यू कैन सी दिस इज वॉट वी कॉल ब्रांड से वे द्रांड प्रोमिस ऑफ ब्रांड प्रोटेक्शन वॉज ब्रॉट अलाइव but then what this brand does fantastically well in terms of its brand do is activating and bringing alive its promise so we have for years have been running hand washing campaigns in rural india teaching children how to hand wash a couple of times a day uh, you may have remembered this great piece of advertising uh, uh, which was helping a child reach till the age of 5 and more recently i'm going to share with you an example where live boy has used gaming and games to try to build the habit of Uh, hand washing so let me share with you a brand do that comes from life boy around the area of uh, hygiene
Santo Cristo. Brega nesse tempo, Single-minded expression, an enduring expression, a brand say and a brand do. I think that's the second uh, message. And the third one is the one that I want to spend some time on because this is often the place where we get it wrong and this is where the crafting comes up. So I want to take a bit of a step back. Every brand can offer a layer of benefits. So there are functional benefits, there are emotional benefits, there are societal benefits. What does that mean? Great taste, uh, shiny floors, uh, uh, hygienic hands, safe uh, uh, safety, these are all functional benefits which all our products and uh, many of your products also provide. There are then emotional benefits and these are the benefits that uh, come to the user as a result of using the product. Feeling good, feeling confident, uh, feeling happy, Just what's the feeling that it evokes. Then there are societal benefits and societal benefits are big social themes or big environmental themes that impact the world around us. Most brands tend to operate in this zone of functional benefits and emotional benefits. So if you look at your brand positioning statement, most of the time you'll, have, you'll be able to articulate what's your functional benefit, what's your emotional benefit. My learning over the years on how to really stand out from the clutter and make what is a normal brand into a purposeful brand is to be able to lift the, uh, to elevate the discussion and to attach yourself to some of the big social themes or some of the big environmental themes. So when Dove, for example, what does Dove do? Dove offers superior care. It basically looks at one quarter of moisturizing cream and it really keeps your skin well moisturized. We know that there is a big conf uh, feeling of confidence that comes up when your skin is well cared for. But what this brand has done so beautifully globally and in India is then to give a bigger meaning uh, to that feeling of confidence by attacking stereotypes. So of course, globally, uh, with uh, uh, the fight against uh, the, the real beauty campaign. The brand took a position on challenging some of the stereotypes that young girls are exposed to from the beauty industry as they grow up and which has negative effects on uh, a girl's self-esteem. In India, the brand has taken a big, uh, 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 has, has almost declared war or has uh, started to address this challenge on some of the stereotypes that are related to beauty in our country, fair skin, uh, uh, how, how the look is uh, uh, getting into areas of body shaming and that's where the stop the beauty test uh, was created and has been super successful for this brand. So these are examples of how brands have elevated the discussion from taking functional benefits to emotional benefits and then have attached themselves to some of the big societal uh, themes of the day. There are other brands which do this from an environmental perspective. So think of Ben & Jerry's, think of Patagonia as a brand. These are brands that talk about climate change. These are brands that talk about uh, 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 waste and how conspicuous consumption uh, is impacting us. So my big message for you is this is where often brands get it wrong, that we are confusing the layer of benefits that a brand offers uh, to, the, uh, to the consumers. And as a brand owner, you have to be really clear, what is your functional benefit? What is your emotional benefit? What is your societal benefit? One practical tip that I have often found easy or a simple way for me to understand what is that societal benefit is to go to the UN 17 SDGs. And if you can look at the 17 uh, sustainable development goals that are there and think about your brand's uh, purpose and to see if it fits one of those 17, then you know that, that you are attacking one of the important themes in the world today. So that's a simple practical thing that I have found very useful for myself and I would encourage you to do that. Second key message is beware of the trap of falling into the trap of just operating around lofty social benefits if you can't link your brand purpose back to your product truth. Even a brand as great as Dove got it wrong uh, when we started the, uh, the campaign for real beauty because the original promise of the brand when, it, when the award-winning campaigns happened was you are beautiful as you are and you don't need to worry about all the stereotypes that are out there. The problem with that was, and this took five, six years of painful, difficult discussions, is that if you start to just focus on saying that you are beautiful as you are, then why do you need Dove? Right? What is the role of Dove? So which is why the brand had to come back and to, and to really talk about care, 
good caring solutions and skin that is well cared for, then can uh, uh, have the license to talk about higher order benefits. So be very careful with this. And this sounds very simple, and I'm telling you, having made a lot of mistakes myself in my journey, that getting the lock between your product's functional benefits to higher order benefits is hard. It has to be very simple, not forced. I have struggled for many years to try to make fragrance brands purposeful, very hard, right? So I said, okay, I'm just going to not try at all uh, because you know some brands uh, will just off operate at the level of functional and emotional benefits. So happy to talk about this in the Q&A, but important, important, important message. Why is purpose important? And I think there's a lot of discussion around this. I have found two or three key uh, reasons why this unlocks massive growth and massive opportunities. The first one is better partnerships. Uh, Surf Excel or Dirt is Good, as it's called, has just recently signed up a partnership with the Arsenal uh, Football Club. And you know we are now the fabric care partner for uh, Arsenal. And why did this happen? It was because Dirt is Good, as you saw through the Surf Excel advertising, is now starting to pick sport as a very, very big uh, uh, playing ground because for the kids of today, teaching values like resilience, never giving up, rising up when you're down are important values that parents want to instill in their kids. And of course, what better playground than sports uh, to be able to do that. And, and then when we started to talk to Arsenal about this, they were very happy to you know, uh, work with us. So having strong purposeful brands or having strong purpose at the heart of your brand helps you to unlock fantastic partnerships. I think it also helps you to create great content, and it's especially great when others start to talk about your purpose. One is for us, to, as a brand owner, for you to talk about your purpose. If it is really inspiring and relevant in the world, you will get others to talk about it. And I'm going to show you a great example here. And I think I have always felt that being a marketer by profession, for me, when I look back at my time in the brand that I manage or in the category that I manage, one of the big yardsticks that I have after all these years is was I able to shape the narrative and shape the conversation in the society based on the point of view that I put out. And uh, I'm going to share with you an example of what we're trying to do with Wim. So uh, I think I go through each one of these one by one. So let me just show you the, the, a small Insta reel on what we do with Arsenal. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, doesn't seem to be sound, but... Yeah, so just to show you that there's a partnership coming on, uh, I'm going to show you an influencer video that was posted by, I'm sure most of you will recognize uh, Dr. Fayed, and uh, she has you know, almost close to 2 million Instagram followers, and this is what she put out uh, when we did the Stop the Beauty test. Now you can see me. It's a face you've seen countless times on your screen, but today I want to introduce you to 15-year-old me. 15 year old me was a girl who suffered with severe acne. It was so bad. I was teased so much that I hated what I saw when I looked in the mirror. How old were you when you were put through that kind of beauty test? I was in high school and as a high school girl, every time I spoke to someone, they would offer me unsolicited advice about my acne, about you should try haldi or change what you're eating or lose some weight, wash your face more often. It was constant. I would go to bed every night hoping to be a different person when I woke up in the morning. And over the years, the acne cleared up and the scars have faded, but somehow the dent to my confidence has stayed when it comes to my looks. Because somehow it sat in my head that this is the way beauty should be. I think it's time we ended these kind of beauty tests and putting people through this because of the way they look. And for the sake of all the little girls across the country, I want to pledge with Dove today to stop the beauty test so nobody else is bullied for the way they look. I want to know from you how old you were when you were put through that beauty test because of the way you looked. Share your stories. Actually getting it out helps. Use the hashtag stop the beauty test. And how old were you? So how cool is it that somebody else talks about your brand purpose and I think that's the power that you can unlock when you are really attacking and addressing some of the big societal themes that are there. I'm going to talk, show you a piece of communication for Wim. So Wim has been on a journey to, as we call it, de-genderize household chores. Unfortunately, the burden of household chores in India falls on the woman. India, when you look at it globally, uh, is, has the lowest, one of the lowest levels of 
male participation in uh, household shows. Uh, and I say that very consciously being a man standing in front of an audience which has quite a few men. Uh, and we decided to do something about it. Uh, uh, some of you may have seen the Wim Black communication that we did a few years ago, uh, I think end of 2022. That was our first attempt. We learned a lot from that. And I think this whole new campaign, we call it Apne Bartan, Apne Aap. That's the whole call to action for this brand to say, let's, let us all take responsibility for our own shows at home. And this advertising that we have developed has tested outstandingly well and has really struck a chord with a whole lot of our consumers. All our brand metrics are back, growing really, really fast, unlocked by this uh, campaign that we ran. So, and I really think that as we take this forward, we will shape the culture. So let me share that with you. Hey, Rohan, तो फिर अपना इंडिपेंडेंस डे मना रहा है मतलब बर्तन धोना सिर्फ एक माँ का काम है इस सोच से इंडिपेंडेंस तू भी बन सकता है इंडिपेंडेंट जब विम की सौ नींबुओं की शक्ति कड़ी से कड़ी चिकनाई निकाल दे तो अपने बर्तन अपने आप या सो दैट्स द व्हाई एंड better partnerships, better content, and an opportunity to shape the culture. That's why purpose is so important, and that's why everybody is trying to really get it right and, and, and get it going. So that then brings me to, this clicker works, yeah, the how. So we talked about the what, we talked about the why, but how do you do this? How do you do this consistently over time? As I said, very hard work. And I want to introduce you to what we do inside Unilever, globally in every market and also here in India, in HUL. We call it, a, it's a program called Get on the Frontline. And that is really our focused marketing capability program for all our marketeers at every level in the organization to really start to uh, get into the reality of the markets that they serve and to really get on the front line. The reality is most of us in this room are not the target audience for the brands that we are uh, producing and serving. I think we're all, most of us are fortunate to, you know, have good financial means, have good exposure, live in good homes, but a large part of India is not fortunate enough to have the opportunities that we have. And I think over time, as marketeers, we start to lose the sensitivity that is there about what's really happening in the lives of the consumers and the people we serve. And I think that that therefore reflects in more and more of a disconnect between the lives we lead and the lives that our consumers lead, and that reflects in the work that comes out. So very, very conscious about that. There's this theme of get on the front line, and how do we get everybody to really immerse, it, immerse yourselves and get skilled to do this every day over time really, really well. So three key themes, we call it do three pillars to the program. Do good, get real, be unmissable. And this is what now in a very, very structured way through the year, over years, there are a whole set of programs, a whole set of tools, and a whole set of capability building that we do for all marketers in uh, Unilever. So just a little bit of sharing of what does get real mean. I think there are really two legs to it. This is all about getting into the context. This is just really getting into the skin and understanding our consumers and understanding the pain points, the gain points. One part of it is a whole lot of data stitching. So there is like data coming out of our years, as I'm sure many of you have. First party data, social listening, trend scan, market data, category value drivers. There are like tons and tons of data. So the famous saying, what's that famous saying? Data, data everywhere, not a drop to drink. All of you have heard of that. And stitching it all up together and distilling it out. Lots of processes, lots of tools, lots of upskilling required. The other one is context immersion. Uh, as I said, I, as, a, as the leader of home care in HUL, I don't live the everyday washing context of a consumer in rural UP. So how do I then judge advertising and judge products that are meant for uh, this lady here who hand washes every day uh, uh, taking water from a hand pump? So you know that requires me to then really get on the front line. So we like to get almost 100 hours of consumer work done by each of our marketers uh, over the time that they're in. I did 40 hours last year myself uh, traveling all over India and this is monitored and tracked. Overall as HUL, we did almost 27,000 hours of consumer work by just the brand managers and the ABMs and the marketing directors themselves. And there is a premium. This is monitored, this is tracked, and we really know who is doing how much. And I can tell you after all these years, uh, more front, front line time is reflected in better quality work. It's just a direct correlation that is there. So the first one is all about getting real, lots of tools on stitching data, 
lots of uh, content immersion and that's how you really unlock the real insights, the pain points, the gain points that matter. The second one is what we call do good and I just picked up two or three things that we do. Every brand, every brand manager has to articulate for their brand this trifecta of what's your people philosophy, what's your product philosophy and what's your planet philosophy. Recognizing the fact that all our brands have an impact in the world around us and the planetary impact is either through the environmental footprint or through the social footprint of this brand. So every brand manager has to articulate that, articulate that very, very clearly. The uh, benefits that I told you, functional, emotional, social. And that has to then find its way back into the communication strategy, into the innovation strategy for the brand. So uh, a large part of, or some part of my day job goes into working with my brand teams, with my, with my VPs for these brands, and to really understand what's the progress, what are the goals, and how we are stepping that up. Partnerships I talked about, and uh, this is super important. And the third bit is for us to activate. So this do good is linked to what I talked about as brand do, brand say. Remember I talked to you about brand say and brand do. Brands with purpose need to do some stuff which provides experience to your consumers. Activate moments that matter. As, uh, we have a few hygiene brands in our portfolio. So COVID was a moment. Holy is a moment for surf. All of you have seen some great surf ad uh, Excel advertising that happens during Holi. So being very, very strategic about which moments matter where you can bring alive your brand purpose and activate it, I think is, an, is a very important theme which I'd, many of you can think about for your brand. For Wim, for example, now that we are talking about apne bartan, apne aap, a moment that we want to activate is the food delivery moment. So when Zomato, Swiggy, etc. brings you food at home, what a great opportunity for us to talk about apne bartan, apne aap. So think about it from your, own, from your brand, saying when you have your brand purpose, what is a moment that you can activate and you will get some fantastic uh, opportunities to activate. And finally, be unmissable. So I talked to you about in, immerse yourself in the, in the context. So I go and wash with my consumers. I go and clean toilets with my consumers. Equally, uh, you need to watch what they watch, shop where they shop, eat where they eat. So I'll give you a, a way. It's a, it's, it's a real story, but it also tells you uh, something. So in my previous role when I was uh, managing Southeast Asia, Korean drama was completely on the rise. And I hate Korean drama, personally. But I decided to spend two weeks of my time watching Crash Landing on You, because that was super popular uh, with my consumers. And that gave me a lot of insights on what kind of tone does my advertising need to crack uh, when I was launching a Sakura variant uh, for one of my conditioners in Southeast Asia. You know, we inspired some of the advertising based on Korean drama. How many of you, I don't know how many of you service rural brands, but how many of you are on Share Chat uh, looking at the content that your consumers in rural watch, right? So I think very few because all of us are busy with our primes and Netflixes and our own content for ourselves because we all have limited time to entertain ourselves, I think. So you have to immerse yourself in the culture of your consumers. So this thing around watch what they watch, I think is a really important piece because you pick up many, many insights on how to be unmissable. I can't stress enough, having done this now for 29 years, the brief, you know, so Content, unmissable content, you only, uh, what comes out is only as good as what you put in. So this is a classic case of garbage in, garbage out. I cannot under, I can't uh, stress how important the briefing process is. And this has to be led from the top. So clarity in the briefing is super important because it's so easy in the ideas business to get lost and chase a good idea, which you think was going to do great, for the, but it may do nothing for your brand. So that whole thing around that single enduring uh, expression requires a lot of time and effort to be put on the brief. There's a third theme which is called distinctive brand assets and we, we I think can do a better job on this as, as Unilever but I think so can other brands. Being very sharp about what are the sounds, what are the uh, colors, what are the jingles, what are the, you know, the swoosh, the, uh, the crack of a magnum uh, when you bite uh, a magnum ice cream. These are all distinctive brand assets and in a moment where the content, uh, content is exploding, being really sharp on distinctive brand assets, knowing what your brand assets are, the bolt of lightning for Rin or the splat for Surf. These are really important and how do you activate it? I was just seeing an article the other week that sound is an underutilized uh, element of, uh, or as a distinctive brand asset, the ting, 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 ting of Britannia. Not enough brands are leveraging sound and an uh, under, under leveraged uh, asset. So again, how do you, leverage distinctive brand assets and to become unmissable. And the last theme which is I think at the heart of 
moving our brand up from emotional benefits to societal benefits is this theme of hashtag unstereotype. So I personally, but my teams, we spend a lot of time trying to understand the stereotypes that are there in the society and, and how, do you, how do you become more modern and uh, more progressive. For that, you have to immerse yourself into some of the things that are happening in the fringes of the society. Uh, trends start in the fringes and come into the mainstream and you cannot be just working with the average consumer because you will miss some of these elements to unstereotype. So uh, how do you understand some of the stereotypes and then how do you very, uh, uh, in a very, very structured way, uh, 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 unstereotype are four key messages on how to be unmissable. So this is where I'm going to stop uh, and then hopefully open up to uh, Q&A. I talked about the what, what is purpose, single-minded, enduring expression, uh, making the world a better place. I talked especially about the, uh, the trifecta or the layer of benefits. I talked about the why and I shared with you some of my experiences on the how. How do you uh, do good, get real, be unmissable? And these are some of the themes that I'm sure will come through the day as you have other speakers coming to. I think the main call to action that I have uh, to all of you in the room is this whole theme of, uh, of you know, how do we move from marketing to mattering? Because I think all of us call ourselves as you know, I'm a marketing manager, I'm a marketing director, I'm a marketing VP. But it's easy to get stuck in the act of marketing. And I think the whole uh, discussion that is on today is you've got to elevate it from marketing to mattering. You've got to matter. Then you will be able to immerse and, in, and um, uh, get into the culture, penetrate the culture, and really build fantastic brands. So I'm going to stop here. Hopefully I'm on time, and I can take some q and I believe. Thank you.